In today's video, we're showing you how easy it is to brew on the Cooler Brew system. Okay, we just hit our strike water temperature of 163, and we're gonna go ahead and take three gallons out and start the sparge. So the idea, the reason we're doing three gallons at a time, uh, we're doing a 10 gallon batch, which is a little over seven gallons with our recipe, is it's just easier to carry this in, and it's, it's a lot safer to use propane outside. Okay, so now we're gonna start putting the grains in so we can do the sparge. Uh, I'm gonna stir and you're gonna pour, right? Yeah, we got about seven. Uh, 7.19 gallons of, of hot water. And the grains on this are about what, about 23, 24 pounds? 24 pounds, I believe. Okay. So you just wanna give it a nice, easy stir. And what you wanna avoid is clumping. So you, if you look in here, you can see that when you start to get more and more in, you have the tendency to let it clump. And uh, if you keep it stirred and pour it in slowly, you'll avoid that clumping. That smells good, doesn't it? It does, I love it. I love this part. We're going shooting for 150 degrees. All right, I need to get the thermometer too, I guess. Yep, I mean, I've got a little bit left. Uh-oh. I'm starting to... I need to get around there, I can't see. Okay, let me uh, stir for a minute. Looks good. Yeah. A little bit of dry there. Okay, I think we can pour a little more in. Yeah, nice. Okay, perfect. We'll go ahead and, uh, I just calibrated this thermometer so we should be able to get a good reading. If you wanna hold that, I'll continue to stir. Kinda of see where we are. So this is gonna sit for an hour once we close the lid and, and this cooler will maintain the temperature uh, really well. I did a batch a couple days ago in this same system and I actually had higher efficiency than what the recipe called for, so that's, that's a good thing. What you got? Got 140 right now, but it's rising. Okay. One of the things, your temperature, if you brew on the same system all the time, you get a really good idea of, of what your temperature is gonna be after you've brewed a few, a few times on that system, because you get an idea of what the drop will be. So we, if, we, if it's not exactly where we want it, we can always add a little bit more hot water to bring it up a little. Yeah, and it looks like we're gonna have to. We're almost 144, so we missed it by about six degrees. Okay. So we've got some water heating up right now. Uh, we'll just add a little bit to it. We have a low uh, water to grain ratio, so it's not gonna hurt anything. No. 
Okay, so we've added a little hotter water to the mash to raise the temperature. Todd's stirring it up real good. We're gonna see where we're at now. So on this system going forward, I'm gonna actually increase the temperature that I use. So we did it at 163. We might, we might actually go to like one, uh, 168, something yeah. like that. So, we, cause we know, and it also is gonna vary some depending on what your grain build is, but your calculator is gonna calculate that anyway. Exactly. Okay, we're at 149, one, 150. All right, right let's there. screw the lid on. And now we're gonna sit for an hour. So don't ever worry about not hitting your target temp. You can always fix that with a little hotter water. You'll get used to your system as you brew on it. That's what I always do. Okay, we're just collecting the water now for our sparge. So we're putting 180 degree sparge water into our hot liquor tank, and then we'll take it in and start the sparge. All right, so now we're just gonna check the mash temp to see what we ended up with, right, James? That's right. See how much we lost in the hour that it was. See how good our cooler is. <laughs> Hot damn, 150 degrees. Uh-uh. Yep, look. You're kidding me. Nope. How's it even possible? Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's why you check. All right. Now I'm going to start the flow on this and you got to pull up on this tab if you have this cooler. It's a little safety device. And what you want to do, you got you, you get a pretty good amount. You can have a pretty good amount flowing in the beginning, but then you want to start equalizing it out with this. It's already kind of at the bed, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to slow this down. Yeah, you want to, the idea is you want to slowly do the sparge yeah. and rinse the grains, not force the sugars out. 30 it, to 45 minutes. Perfect, think, yeah. Somewhere in there. The, the longer the better. I think the last one I did, I was able to do 40. Uh, and usually, and we didn't, we didn't talk about this, but you want to do the Vorloff. And the Vorloff is this. If you look down in the kettle, the first runnings are gonna have whatever was underneath the false bottom. So typically what we'll do is we'll shut the valve off and then we'll pour this back over the grain bed to get all the first. Yeah, and I did that on the batch I did as well. So the last batch I did as well. So. so, and that's what we're doing now. We're just trying to keep as clean a ward as possible. And you know, you don't wanna, you don't wanna boil any holes. Perfect. So now that, that gets us clean. Start it up again. And we'll... Now we've got a grain bed established. Let's slow that down a little bit. And what you want to do is you want the water flowing in. Once you've got the down to where the, you've got the grain bed, you want to have the water flowing in at about the same rate as it's flowing out, as close as you can get it. And as slow as you can do it to, to be able to get to that uh, time that we talked about. The water's really clear on top, so you can, uh, you can tell that we're, it, it really filters well. Yep. I mean, it does an excellent job of filtering. Uh, you, don't really, you don't really have to do this, but I always get a kick out of getting a reading when you're starting to do the mash to kind of see how much sugar you're collecting. And uh, this one's, uh, the bricks percentage is 20, which you've got a chart. What did, what did you say 20 was? 1082. 10, uh, 10 so it's pretty high. You're get, we're getting a lot of sugar out of here. All right, we're almost at the boil. And if you'll look, we got a hot break coming up. So I like to skim as much of that as I can off of it. it. Tends to help make the beer a little clearer when you're ready to keg or bottle. 
And you'll get this several times, but it's always a good idea to try to skim it off. I use a ladle because I can get just the foam. But that's all proteins and not a lot of the wart. And you can see, you just tip it a little bit. You can kind of move it around. Doesn't mean you're not gonna all, you're not gonna get any wart because you will. But if you use a ladle, you can kind of manipulate to where you can get as less a wart as possible and get the hot break off. Okay, so for this recipe, we're starting out with two ounces of hops. We just happened to weigh these earlier and realized that this particular hop variety is almost exactly a shot glass per ounce. So we're going to go ahead and start by putting that in. It's boiling pretty good, so you want to watch your temperature so you don't get a boil over. We, we probably won't in this kettle, but if you've got a, a kettle that's smaller, you, you got to be very careful when you're adding them. All right. All right, this is our uh, wart chiller, and I usually stick this in probably 15, 20 minutes before the end of the boil. Um, you make sure you get the hot bag. We don't want to squ squish it down into the bottom. Let me, let me get the hot bag. Perfect. Got it. All right, if you've got a thermometer like we do, you got to make sure you don't want to damage the, the thermal copper side of the back side of the thermometer. And then just let that boil, it'll, it'll sanitize the chiller. Okay, we got World Flock tablets. This helps with clarity on the beer and then the rest of the hops. Now, I do one bag because bags aren't cheap. Just throw that in there and then... Uh, I've always just done one bag too. Some people do more than one. Yeah, they have. I never have because I never have. I'd rather spend my extra money on grains than hot bags. <laughs> okay. Okay, and we just tie this off. 15 minutes to go. We can chill it. Okay, we are done with the boil. So now I've got, because we have such warm tap water, We've got actually a pre-chiller that we've got set up that we're going to fill up with ice. When we get down to about uh, in the 90s, we'll add ice to that. It'll chill it down even more to pitching temp, which is uh, because we're doing uh, ESB, we're going to want it about 70 degrees. That's hot. So we're going to let that drain out. We ended up with a, uh, about 10 gallons left over. So now we've got our immersion chiller in. We're just going to wait for it to cool down, oxygenate the wart, put it in fermenters, and we're done. Good brew day. All right, we've had our pitch temperature. We're going to start putting our wart into the bucket. And what we'll do here is we've got two buckets since we did 10 gallons. You want to hand me that other one? I always like to put a little of each just to kind of spread out the stuff in the bottom and then finish filling both of them. I think we should have just about five gallons, We right? should. We ended up with uh, uh, just a little under 10 gallons. Just One thing a you, know, you hear a lot about getting oxygen is bad, but it's good right now. This is the one time you want it, so I like to let it fall in there pretty hard and get some oxygen in there before we pitch the yeast. That's right. Yeast aspiration is what they call it. And what it does is it, the yeast have to have to breathe as well as eat. So that's why you want oxygen in the wart. It, uh, it'll, it'll help them multiply quicker and it'll help decrease the lag time of the yeast. Where you, when you don't want oxygen is past this point. You don't want to get you don't want to oxidize your beer later when you're kegging it and that sort of thing. All right, I just uh, sanitized the bags a little bit for the yeast. And since we're pouring this in here, I'm just gonna pour it in. Oh, there we go. I should have shook that bag better. I was talking and not uh, paying attention, but we'll, we're gonna go ahead and uh, Stir that up real good anyway. 
Give me a little bit of that in there. Uh, let me get the bag open better. There you go, that'll help a lot. Thank you. Go get, get that up. All right, I'm not gonna get it in there. Okay. On right. your hand? Okay. Yeah, I got it. I was watching it. Okay. All right, let's try this with this one. We'll do it the right way now. <laughs> I thought I'd already done that before I put it in there. My bad. Okay, that kind of gets, that makes it so it goes in there a lot better. It's always good to make a mistake on the first one so people can see what to do when you make a mistake. We have to do that on purpose, right? Yeah, we're meant to do that. We're do the same thing again. Yeah, I think so. Okay. All right. I'm still, we're still gonna stir that as well, but between stirring it and uh, we, we already sanitized this. Between stirring it and having it fall in there, I think we're gonna have some really good oxygen to get in there. You know what I like best about this? We just got done cleaning everything. Let me show you how this goes back together. False bottom, seven inches of hose. Check it out. No nipples. You just push it in here, give it a little shake. That's it. Can't be any simpler. Okay, well we just finished brewing today on the Cooler Brew 10 gallon system and had a good brew day. And I don't yeah, it, it was it was fun to you know we we for the most part we use an automated system, but it was really fun to use this again and and kind of get your hands dirty so to speak. I think we had a really good day. We, we did. Had, we uh, hit our we hit over our gravity. Hit over our gravity. Way I mean, way over. Second our Second time I've done that on the system, so. So I don't know if that's the guy that created the recipe or this is just that good. So <laughs> right. I think this is that good.